Welcome to Electron Line, and now we're going to start a new chapter in chemistry. It's called chemical kinetics. So what do we mean by chemical kinetics? What is that? What do we mean when you see those words? Well, kinetics means motion, and it has to do with when reactants come together and they then form products. Well, normally we kind of think of it as happening instantaneously. So here you have a couple of reactants, they come together and out pop the products, and Yes, we usually we think, oh, it just happened just like that, but not always. Matter of fact, a lot of the time it happens much more slowly and sometimes it will not happen at all until something else happens first, something that will get it going. So what I drew on the board here is some relationship between what we call the concentration of the reactants and a time graph. So on the vertical axis we have reactants, on the horizontal axis we have a time graph. So let's say we bring some reactants together and they begin to react and let's assume it's going to take some time before all of them are reacted and turn into products. And so you can see that first we start with the maximum number of reactants that we have and over time the number of reactants will diminish and eventually go down to zero. And then here we have a graph, we have the products versus time. And so at the very same time, as more and more reactants are consumed, more and more products are produced. And you can see that the number of products continue to increase until we reach the full amount of all the products that will be produced by this reaction. Of course, once you run out of reactants, you will not form any more products. So this would be the maximum products that you can have. And eventually, and when the reaction completes, you'll have all the products that you want it when you start out with a certain number of reactants. So here's an example of a reaction. Here we have methane, there we have oxygen. When we bring them together, some reaction will take place and the outcome will be you will end up with some water and some carbon dioxide. Now, we typically know that when we put oxygen and methane together, nothing will happen. They will just sit there, commingled, but then if there's maybe a little bit of a spark, some heat, something to get it going, then all of a sudden the reaction will go fairly quickly and result in some products. Of course, it's not instantaneous. It does take time and so we want to represent that reaction with a curve like this saying it's going to take some time before all the reactants are used up. In some cases, it will go very quickly. So here we have a graph where you can see that as soon as the reaction starts, very, very quickly, all the reactants are consumed and the products are produced. Now, when we talk about the concentration of reactants, usually we think about reactants being in a solution, and so we think about them in terms of the number of moles per liter. So a lot of what we're going to cover in these next so many videos is that we have uh, aqueous solutions that we bring together, and then of course we talk about the molarity or the number of moles per liter, and as you can see that the concentration of reactants in moles per liter will then diminish over time, and the number of moles per liter for the products will increase over time, and finally reach a maximum value. So when we hear chemical kinetics, that's exactly what we hear. And this thing right here where the reaction takes place, it's kind of like a black box because a lot of the time we're not quite sure what exactly happens during the reaction to make products turn into, I mean uh, reactants turn into products. Sometimes it's clear, sometimes simply we know that's because of a collision when two things collide the, the product that you end up with is in a more stable, energetic state than the, the, the reactants you started with, and so they simply exchange atoms and turn into reactants, and it goes fairly quickly. In other cases, a lot of things have to happen, sometimes in multiple steps, before you end up with the products, and so therefore we don't always know exactly how that reaction takes place. We just know it takes some time, and we can actually measure that time. Now, one more thing that we should know is the rate at which the reaction happens is actually the slope of this line. So if I take a ruler like this and I hold it up against, against this line, this curve that represents the reactants over time, the, the concentration of reactants over time, you can see that this, this uh, curve changes slope as we call it. And the steeper the slope, the faster the reaction is happening, and the less steep the slope, the less fast the reaction is happening. We can do the same with this curve right here. You can see that the steeper the slope, the faster the reaction, and the less steep the slope, the, um, the slower the reaction. Now notice that these curves, even though one slopes downward like this and one slopes upward like that, the actual slope, the steepness of the curve, is about the same here and here. If this is representing the same reaction, you can see that this, this slope right here and this slope right here will be equal, except this will have a negative slope and this will have a positive slope. And you'll see in the next video how we actually handle that to compensate the negative or the positive slope. 
but you can see the rate at which reactants are disappearing is typically the rate at which products are being made. And you can see that at the very end, when almost all the reactions have disappeared, the reaction starts to become very slow, and here where almost all the products have been created, then you can see that um, the reaction starts becoming very, very slow. And eventually it just kind of peters out, and then you're completely done. So hopefully that gives you an idea of what we mean with chemical kin kinetics. It's simply the rate at which reactions are occurring. And so now in the next so many videos, we'll go ahead and give you a good idea of how to actually calculate all those things and keep track of them and actually come up with the exact rate at which these things are happening over time and at the exact change of the reactants and the products as the reaction takes place. So that's what it is. That's what chemical kinetics is. And if you're interested, stay tuned for the next so many videos.